So just scrying the lingua ignota word aigons, which means God. And I'm just seeing this great turning. It's like a cylinder and it's a cylinder uh, as if it were moving away from me or towards something in front of me. And this is connecting around, making a Taurus, T-O-U-R-S, T-O-T-O-R-U-S, excuse me. And it's connecting on the other side and it's rotating in itself. So this is very much reminding me of Keter sort of being this unified whole which is constantly coming back into itself. Um, and the experience is such for, the, for if we we're looking at other sephirot, then it would be that, no, well, maybe it comes down to these other things, but it's no, that we're just not aware that it's always just constantly within itself, but also being perceived in manifold expressions. So anyway, it's sort of making this rotation with itself, like a little donut hole. And I'm reminded of the most important part of the crown, which is the space at the center of it. And this is not only the defining point for a torus, T-O-R-U-S, uh, in terms of mathematically everything can be there, but it's also, it has within it, this is like the Ein Sof, which is this, this point or this potential, potentia, to have everything literally be defined by that central point. And I mean, we can do all sorts of different things with crowns. We can add stalks and stuff like that and add jewels to sort of add to its mystery. But the most important thing about the crown is that is the, is the central point, you know, that like on a king or a queen or an empress or an emperor or what have you, the central point, it's drawing attention to the person who is wearing it and the mind of the person who is wearing it. And by extension, by really thinking about it, it's the central point. You don't, we, we can't do that as well around the chest. So we put a crown on the head, but that same vertical line goes right down to the heart. So that's why we speak of people whose hearts are, we think of a, a kingly heart, something like that, a royal heart. So all of this is extraneous exegesis, but um, so anyway, I'm seeing this heart and it's twisting, excuse me, I'm seeing this, this Taurus and it's twisting and it's twisting like this sort of, so the outside comes down and then, and then up and then out again. And I'm leaning into the vision a little bit more, trying to concentrate, disperse, but I'm part of this dispersion is part of it. But in, in terms of trying to do that, I'm seeing, it's like, I'm seeing the entire universe. I'm seeing all the stars and stuff like this. And it's like, okay, what I'm being told is, this is like the fabric of space time continuing to sort of like come into itself, as it were. It's like this, um, it's like that same rotational energy is there that you would see from this Taurus. He's saying, God is speaking of himself here. He's saying, imagine this entire fabric of space-time sort of just in this constant rotation or this constant self-engagement. And that is what is happening with God himself 
is he's constantly engaging with himself and therefore we see this entire world around us, this entire universe around us. And this flow of time is like another engagement with himself. Um, so we, if we were to say time one and then add the smallest possible amount of time, the quanta, quantum of time, then that's God engaging with himself and literally following like this, this train of heart thought. It's, it's hard, you know, we say like a train of thought because like our thoughts can go somewhere, this or that or the other thing. But really it's, it's God following his heart to its logical conclusion and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm told to just not ask about angels yet. That will come next. But really the, the next thing is that I'm feeling this very strong engagement at the heart. And it's like my, it's like, this is, this is God sort of expressing as best he can to me what he is, right? And, and it's like, I'm seeing this eye and this eye is sort of looking at me and engaging with me. It's like, if you've ever looked into the eyes of someone that you love, you know, whatever, whatever kind of love that is, he's saying it doesn't matter, but really that sort of pure love, it's like, that is that engagement. It's like you can, somebody can see right into the center of your heart. You know, I'm not talking about somebody who can see through, you. no, this is somebody who can see into you and appreciate you with the same softness that that in, innermost part of you is. That same Buddhists would say emptiness, but it's not, it's, I prefer softness. So, so it's beautiful. And he's saying everybody engages with, with God at whatever, in whatever means that they're able to, or that they do. I'm not, I don't have anything more profound to say than that. Um, So I'm just asking if there's anything else. So I'm seeing like, uh, you know, if you look at an asterisk, a six sort of, you know, the three lines as if you were looking at an X, Y, Z axis, it's like, these are, these are sort of the directions that hmm. I'm being told to pause on directions. It's like, okay, so this is reminding me of um, a hexagon. If you imagine all of the different lines, if you imagine lines coming down from the different points of a hexagram and all of those coming down to a point, he's saying that's what it's like for him to engage with us. So this is very geometric. So imagine like, you know, a hexagram like this, the, the classical one, and you imagine the points coming down and you imagine this sort of flat, but coming down in a three dimensional way down to a point, down to a root. He's saying that's what it's like for him, except he's rooted in all of these different dimensions like that and and what I mean by dimensions is literally the, the dimensions of the universe, any single way that he can be rooted into that, his experience of each one of us in our hearts and all the other beings of the universe is like that. So it's this isomorphism at the same time as it's very much in a very direct engagement with the heart, whether it's heartache or, you know, the joys of the heart or all of that, he is always engaged always engaged like that. And we can think of, you know, the points of each of our hearts coming up and into a much more, a much wider manifold expression. And I'm being told that's it. So thus ends the vision.